Good evening, everyone. Hope everybody's enjoying tonight's dinner festivities, because there is much we can learn from. I am Timothy Knight, and on behalf of Mr. Marcus Herring, who can unfortunately not attend, I will be introducing our guest speaker for tonight, Mr. Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire. Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire is one of a few Freedom School graduates that can say that he enrolled on day one. Not day one of the school opening, but day one of his life. Mr. Herring has truly been touched by Freedom School. He started Freedom School at the Health Awareness Center, participating in competitions, mobile learning expeditions, and traveling with the Axel Group to places like New York, Atlanta, and Philadelphia, which became his playgrounds and sparked a love for travel and meeting people. His involvement with both the Juneteenth and Quasi celebrations have grounded this young man with his culture, heritage, and a love for his people. When it asked about the initials behind his name, he responded, and I quote, many people think I'm a lawyer. But my parents added the Esquire, which means gentlemen, to remind both my brother and myself what was expected of us." Unquote. A 3.8 student and one of the Urban League's black scholars, Paul has attended International Academy of Flint since it opened and is a part of the first class of 2012 graduates to have attended the school since kindergarten. He also Very impressive, I know. He also has the distinction of being selected as this year's prom king. <laughs> Multi-talented. Paul starred in a movie. Mm, okay, a YouTube clip. <laughs> Called Getting the Goods, produced by his brother Marcus Herring with a comical anti-drug message and another titled Haterade and a couple of television commercials credited to his name. He has the privilege of, he's had, had um, excuse me, he has had the privilege of interviewing President Barack Obama, Tava Smiley, and Wyclef to name a few via his family's business spectacle productions. <laughs> Selected as one of the three students chosen to travel ten days to England for an international youth summit, Mr. Heron's comments on the experience were enlightening. Yeah. Quote, so many people to enjoy. Such a little time to enjoy meeting them, unquote. He said, adding, quote, I am from Flint and had to go to London to experience a riot, unquote. Between track, school, his venturing troop, and Xbox, Mr. Herring has been an active scout for years and will be receiving his Eagle Scout status before the summer ends. When he, <laughs> when he, plans, when he plans to begin his studies in computer engineering at Michigan State University. Mr. Herring's activities thus far into one word, one very articulate word, it would be wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker for this evening, Mr. Paul H. Herring, Jr. Esquire. exactly what it is that made me 
the awesome catastrophe that you now see before you. I remember my parents taking me to Disney World when I was in first grade. I thought of the leadership trip that my school paid for me to go to overseas. And I recalled the trip uh, to Africa that Freedom School took, but that I was unfortunately too young to take at the time. Thinking back on all these things, it dawned on me that the thing that's helped me be me, the thing that shaped me to be the person that has been given the honor to speak to you guys tonight, is travel. Travel is the cure to ignorance. It's the pathway to knowledge, and it's the gatekeeper of understanding and acceptance. At least in my opinion it is. When I was too young to uh, go to Africa, I was kind of upset, I was a little bummed out. But now that I'm older, I realize that it was actually a blessing that I wasn't able to go because at, a tender, at that tender age of eight, nine, or whatever age I was at the time, I wouldn't have been able to fully appreciate and comprehend the meaning of a trip like that. But life has a funny way of replacing missed opportunities. Uh, I briefly talked about earlier me traveling overseas. Uh, with my school, but in order for me to talk about that trip, I want to first talk about my school and an organization that helped me do it. Uh, my school and its, or and its origins is based upon an international company called Savas. Savas has schools around the world, and within and the unique thing that Savas schools do is called uh, a student life. Student life uses its is a unique program that uses its students to change the school. Not as teachers, not as principals, but the students using their talents and their ideas to help create a better atmosphere for, for, its, uh, for students, uh, my bad. And this year, well, this past school, uh, not this school year, but the year uh, previous, I was selected among three students out of my entire high school, along with my brother who could not be here tonight, to go on a leadership course to Bath, England. When I was told that I was going to be uh, picked to go by my student life coordinator, I tried to play it off cool. Like on the outside, I was like, oh, okay. But on the inside, I was like, yeah, woo! And, and I was just so happy. And I, it was just really, but I, I didn't show it because I tried to play the cool person. <laughs> but uh, as I started to get down and calm down from that excitement, I realized that this was my trip to Africa that I missed out on when I was younger. Now, the leadership they taught us overseas, they, they were useful. But traveling overseas for the first time and meeting kids from Lebanon, Syria, Germany, Iraq, Iran, England, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, the US, Yemen, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and more made, is what made the trip worthwhile for me. Being able to meet kids from all over the world, from all around the world, from different walks of life, and yet still having common ground between all of us was mind-blowing for me. But what was even more mind-blowing were the differences. Like how my friend Ruba from Saudi Arabia didn't wear a full body veil like you see, see in uh, public media, but instead wore westernized clothes. And how my friend Nihar from Iraq didn't have a bomb strapped to his chest trying to kill me just because I was American. Social media destroys everything nowadays, to the point where you don't know, really know that there are American-loving Iraqis or that there are westernized women in Saudi Arabia. And these are just the social differences. The only way to find out things like these and to help free yourselves of the chains of racism and ignorance is through travel. It doesn't even have to be as far away as England. You can take a road trip to Canada, or even just go down the street to Detroit or something like that. So that is why I strongly encourage any, uh, any, strongly encourage 
everybody that if ever the opportunity presents itself to seize it, but with open arms so that way you miss nothing. I'm going to leave you guys with a quote from Gandhi and then I'm going to be done. His quote says, be the change you wish to see in the world. And it's my favorite quote by him. And I'm a firm believer in his quote. But in order to truly grasp the meaning of what Gandhi has to say, I, I firmly believe that you cannot change the world without first experiencing it yourself. Thank you guys for your time.